Hey, I'm Yvette Vanderbrink and we're up here in Millbank, South Dakota with Jim Guesswine at Guesswine Motors and we're looking at part of his fabulous Mopar collection today. Now Jim, how long have you been a, a, Chry a Chrysler Dodge Ram Jeep car dealer? I've been selling cars for just short of 60 years, uh, Yvette. Wow. Uh, it's Every day is a fun day and I guess, you know, today with uh, what we're looking at and it's kind of do that with a bit of a heavy heart, to be honest with you. Uh, I guess my heart has been telling me to hold on to these cars, and I've done that for many years, and then maybe it's just time to move on. My head is telling me to do something else. Well, you know, I've found with a lot of guys that these are actually like your children. Huh. You yeah. know, they're like your babies, and it's kind of like marrying off or sending well, one of your kids off. You know, there's, there's a story with, with most every one of them right. as far as that's concerned, and of course that makes it a little more special. And probably what's more special than anything is the relationships that you, right. you generate with your classic car sales and of course the new car sales as well and again we're very fortunate to have the following in the new and used car department and we've got uh, our classic car people that are calling us time after time so to speak we've got a gentleman over in uh, Sweden that uh, is a very special guy he's been over he bought a car from me transported it over to the east coast and shipped it over there and, and he just calls me probably once a month. That's cool. And anyway, like I said, the relationships are pretty special. Yeah, and I'm sure that as a car dealer, you've come across a lot of trade-ins and uh, that have been, per, you know, well, interesting. Maybe a couple dozen eggs once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a kidding. Yeah. <laughs> not now, a kidding at all, that's true. Yeah, now I, I understand from your brother that uh, hunting, fishing, and racing snowmobiles well, was a priority at the beginning. Uh, my brother John and my older brother Art and myself uh, have raced snowmobiles for some years. I guess I used to be uh, racing rups uh, and so did my older brother and uh, kind of a fun time but I can tell you what my back and my knees are telling me it wasn't <laughs> so fun today. <laughs> yeah I could see that and uh, you know the other question I always ask my sellers like you is why Mopar? You know, why, how did it get to be a favorite? Well, obviously my knowledge of Mopars is better than it is on, on G, GM vehicles. I'm not saying I don't know anything about them, but I need to do more research there. Sure. But I can tell you, I was a Ford guy for a couple of years as really? well. So anyway, that, that's the main reason is because I specialize in in, in the vehicle because of the knowledge I have. I learned a long time you don't want to sell something you don't know anything about. True. And then uh, you, when you started your car dealership, you kind of started right from the ground up and built it to where it is. Well, pretty special time, yeah. I guess, today. I guess we're pretty fortunate to have the support that we've had over the years. And, and I'm talking about support from family. I'm talking about support from the neighbors, friends, relatives. and. My dad was in the business years ago. He started uh, in 1920 something, I wow. guess, 29 or something like that. And so anyway, that's, it's been the business all my life and it's, just, it's a good business. It, it really is. is. Business. It's, uh, I guess all of us have uh, days where you think, what the heck, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's fun. Yeah. Now, uh, we are standing here in between two winged warriors. Now, why don't you tell me about these? Well, they're, they made 1,721 Superbirds, and uh, they're a special vehicle. Obviously, they were uh, they were very successful on the race circuit. Richard Petty uh, raced uh, those, and as well as others, and uh, a 440 motor in this one. You can get that two different ways, and then of course they had the 426 Hemi as well. But very limited production vehicle, and they won everything that they entered on the racetrack. And of course, so they won so much that NASCAR outlawed them. That's right. And uh, in fact, they first they had them take the motor down to a 318. That didn't help them because they won everything with that. Anyway, it was a very successful car there, but not successful on the showroom floor because of what the car really is meant to be. Right. It's meant to be a race car. That's right. Now, do you ever think Chrysler will get back into NASCAR? <laughs> I'll make a couple calls, okay? Okay, that'll be good. <laughs> Why don't you tell me about this uh, Superbird right here? I see we have a pistol grip four-speed on this one. Pardon? I see it's a four-speed car. 
Well, obviously, you know, they're available with the four-speed or an automatic and bucket seats, bench seats or whatever, but uh, you're the buyer, you tell us what you want. This particular car was owned, uh, came out of the w Tim Wilborn uh, collection. Uh, Tim was very well known uh, over the years and not just Mopar, but a lot of other cars. Uh, took me about, I'm not so sure, but I think it took me eight, ten years to buy this car from Tim. Maybe not quite that long, but anyway, nice guy, don't get me wrong. Just really <laughs> didn't want to part his part with his car. Sounds like somebody else I know. Oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> You're no fun at all today. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's go back here and tell me about this. This is a 1970 GTX, and it's got a special history. Yes, it really does. This, uh, this car, my brother John and I saw it advertised, or I did, I guess, doesn't make any difference, uh, down in Minnesota. The guy that owned this car that we bought it from ordered it new. It's a one owner car. Uh, it had 36, 7,000 miles, something like that. Whatever's on it is actual miles. Um, the only paint work that's ever been done to this car is $50 worth of paint work on the left rear quarter panel. But the guy we bought it from is. Uh, uh, he was in tears when we left. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, he called the next day and uh, he wanted his car back and so forth. Well, obviously it was a good good value uh, and, a, and a very rare car. And we ended up keeping the car. And, and it, it's really well worth uh, anyone's uh, look, looking at. It's a, it's a beautiful car yeah. and it's a good car. And it's a 440 car. 440 car. It's got the sh sure grip differential, a lot of good equipment on it. The only thing that's not original is the wheels. Right. But uh, awesome car. You don't find 70 GTXs in this with this background and this kind of mileage very often anywhere. You don't find a lot of 70 GTXs that aren't beat to crap. Oh, that's the truth to that. Because they had a lot of power and they were a lot of fun. Yep, that's right. You know, when I was in high school, a lot of these went through a lot of uh, oh, she's abuse. that kind of gal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was—I never drove calm. I was pretty fast. I, I drove fast all the time. I got into trouble a lot off of it. Let's go look at this uh, little Shelby GLHS over here. Well, you said it right. It is a GLHS. Yes. Which means it's a Shelby. Uh, yes. Uh, Carol Shelby's company bought this vehicle from Chrysler. Okay. As a Dodge. And I guess technically it would be a Dodge, but actually it's not. Uh, there was 500 of them made. Uh, Carol Shelby built, f bought 500 of them and made GLHSs out of all of them. And uh, like I said, 500 made and very rare car and very quick car, very fast car. A lot of people would never believe that, but they are. Now your this brother told me that it, in Motor Trend did an article about it and it beat a Mustang. That's right. Yeah. Yes, it did, and it was one of the fast Mustangs of its of that era as well. Uh, this is number six of 500, and uh, it's it's on the the uh, the dash. Uh, the plaque on the dash says number six of 500 as well. Now, uh, the GLH has a special meaning. Well, now wait a minute. They made a GLH, and that was a go like hell. Yes. And people get that confused with the GLHS, but this is the only one. Of 500, uh, number six of 500, I should say. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, this is kind of a, the, a saying with that. The, the, G, the GLH was a car that was marketed by Dodge yeah. for Dodge. It had nothing to do with Shelby. Right. Just this particular line of 500. That's right. All right. Exactly. And this has 6,000 and some miles, is that correct? I, that's right. I think that's right, yeah. Okay. And it's got a turbo. Oh, sure. It's more than just a turbo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would imagine this thing flies, being so small Car like Carol that. Shelby did things right. Yeah. He really did. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go look at some of your Imperials. There's 23 Imperials in this collection. This is a beautiful car, Jim. That color is really popping in the sun. It really is. And it's had a lot of, we've had a lot of interest. It's been on my website uh, here for a, probably three weeks or so. Cars never, I have never offered this car for sale. Like almost every car that we're looking at today, I've never been offered for sale on my website, with very few exceptions, if any. And this uh, one's loaded out. Got a uh, lot of uh, options. It, it's a nicely optioned vehicle. It's a great color, as you said. The interior has got the, the white interior. Um, the fellow that used to own this vehicle, obviously, uh, uh, I should say the fellow's son that used to own this vehicle, called me here about a month ago 
I was very interested in the car and, and knew a lot about it. His dad had passed away and he never got the car. Oh, uh, no. And, uh, so anyway, um, he knew a lot about it and was happy to share that with me. I never got any of my dad's collection either, though, when no. I sold it. <laughs> I got one of my dad's, and that was a 26 Model T. Oh, <laughs> you have a lot of Imperials. Now, why, why, and in convertibles, why so many Imperials? Well, I guess you can look at it however you want to. Uh, the Imperial is a very, very special car. It was when it was new. To be honest with you, it was a bit overpriced when it was new, so it didn't sell as well as the Cadillac or the Lincoln. But today, they're more rare than, than some of the others, therefore more sought after, and uh, probably more valuable, but more valuable down the road a bit as well. I think I was looking at down the road, hoping that uh, they'll bring some money tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Yeah, I have to happen to agree with you. The well, Imperial is a, definitely a luxury car. Well, you know, this this car is is a respectable car. It's worth good money, and I look for this car to appreciate in value a lot here in 10 to 15 years down the road, maybe even 5 to 10 years. I agree with you. I'm not really an expert to, to, to be able to say that, but that's the way I see it. I think anybody that would buy these cars would... would see some appreciation and value and obviously the pocketbook i love the colors awesome colors yeah they are. that's personal preference you know yeah it is it is had some interest in this car to say the least i mean the, the color is awesome on this one you don't see the color very uh -huh. often obviously there aren't too many uh sunshine yellows uh, uh out there either but anyway it uh I, there isn't an Imperial that I have that, that I can't say something special about, and it's, this one is no different. Black bucket seats, nice, nice car. And you talk about color. Oh, take, this is beautiful. Take a look at this one. I mean, lilac. I, I shouldn't say it's my favorite color, but it is one of the favorites. Put it that way. Nice car, very nice car. Now, is lilac the correct color for this? Excuse me. Is lilac the correct color for this? We'll check on that. <laughs> because uh, she's testing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in I know you're not a GM guy, <laughs> but in 1965, Chevrolet made a 65 Impala and a Chevelle in evening orchid, and it's the same color. Right now, we're selling Imperials. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 15, this, 59 Dodge Custom Royal Lancer. Very special car, yes. very special car. I talked to the previous owner in this vehicle here. He called me about three weeks ago and was very interested in the car, not necessarily for himself, but for one of his buddies. And he tells me that the 14,000 miles in this car is actual, and I would never guarantee that with any car. These cars are sold miles exempt. That's because of the age of the car, but uh, it's got the plastic seat covers on it, the waffle seat covers and so forth in it. It runs as good as it looks, it really does, so. I tell you what, if you look at the interior, I would I would beg I, to believe that. Well, and just take a look at the wheel covers of, yes, 59 wheel covers like that are just. Well, there's no wear in the door jams. Well. It's a nice car, beautiful car. I, I honestly don't know, but that's what he tried to tell me. Yep. And here's a, another special car, if you may. Uh, and no, I don't know the actual color of this car. I did it one time, <laughs> but the memory's slipping a little bit, you yep, know. Yep. But uh, this car was um, was restored some years ago. The interior, uh, the exterior, all of this has been done by the previous owner. And I don't think that the car's got a thousand miles on it since. I and could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. 1960. It's a 1960s. Look at the fins in the back. A uh, very, very rare car, no matter what. You buy it in a convertible, buy it in a sedan, a two-door. Uh, like I said, a very rare body style. Beautiful car. Yes, it really, really is. Very the special car. black and white interior there. Yep. And here's the uh, 65 Imperial. Uh, another nice convertible. Uh, just depends on color preference. Yep. That's, that's all. Here's talk about color preference. You didn't see many of this color back in that day uh, in a convertible. At least I didn't. Uh, I haven't seen very many advertised or in shows or anything at all this color, but again, a unique color and a pretty darn nice car. It is. Talk now about darn is... nice. Here's a uh, 63. 
Uh, Chrysler 300. This is an Indy 500 pace car, and a, yes, it, it wasn't used as, as a pace car, but it was designated that, or delegated that, I should say, however you want to say it. Um, and it had the decals on it at the time. This car is, is a beautiful, beautiful car. It was bought new by a lady in Tucson, Arizona. She owned it to, up until it had about 90,000 miles on it. She passed away, and it went to the person that took care of this vehicle for her, the technician. He got the car from that estate, put it in storage, and didn't come out of storage until he passed away. Here it is today. Now, I read that there are less than 1,900 of these were made for a pace center convertible. Well, then let's go to the 413 motor. Exactly. I looked at that. That even makes it more rare. That's right. 413 motor, air conditioning, 63 Chrysler 300 pace car. Very rare car. It, uh, it is missing the uh, pace car insignia on the door, but it is a real car, and I've got documentation from Chrysler that it is. That's great. Yeah. Here's a, you know, you talk about special cars, like I said, you can, you can say that about most every car. I can say that about most every car I have. But this car is just a true, nice, clean, quality car. Uh, Well-maintained car. I've got a list of things that were done to this car. Not anything major as far as replacement is concerned, a major transmission or anything like that. But just a, a lot of work been done to just make the car as nice as, as it could be without any major restoration. That is an amazing dash. Nice. Yes, it is. 55,000 yep. and some miles. That's yep. awesome. Well, well maintained car. Yes, beautiful. Runs I like as the good color. as it looks. It really does. Okay. Yep. This one. You know, <laughs> in, I talked about relationships. Yes. And this car. I struck up a relationship, and not with a lady, <laughs> on, on the uh, uh, on the internet. This guy was is a car guy. He was a uh, fighter jet pilot back in World War II, I think it was, and um, he had pictures of uh, movies, I should say, of him flying and, really? and in his uh, fighter jet. Anyway, struck up a conversation about cars because that's why I called him, or he called me. I don't remember. And uh, this car I wanted to buy. He had a, he had a six, this is a 62 Imperial. He had a 62 Imperial convertible. Beautiful car. He had this one. And I also must say it is a beautiful car and a good car. Anyway, then he had, uh, had another car. But this car I was interested in buying. And I said, well, what would you take for the car? He said, Jimmy, I'll sell you the car for $5,000. We were, I think, kind of buddies because five grand was... Yeah. It was super cheap, if I can use the word. Yes. But anyway, long story short, uh, he passed away. And I wasn't mentioned in the will or anything. Didn't expect that it would be. But uh, he passed away, and um, the estate the state administrator called me and uh, said, you know, he said, Jimmy, I can't sell you the car. Because I had told him. I said, when it comes available, you let me know. And, oh, he says, I got a relative that, anyway. I ended up getting the car bought for $11,500, and that's some years ago. The car is obviously worth considerably more than that it, uh, because of its condition. The miles are good. The car is nice, and, uh, and uh, again, one of those special cars. Yeah, the guy that the had history. it. Yeah, one of those deals. Take a look at the headlights. Wow. A lot of design. You know, Chrysler had a lot of design and Imperial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of thought into those cars. You talk about cars. design. How about this one? Yeah. Take a look at the fins, the inverted fins, if you want to call them that. This is a 61 Dodge uh, Dart. Uh, this car we refinished, had done, and did the interior as well. And it runs as good as it looks. It's uh, just a really nice car. A very special uh, body style. And uh, again, a great running car, a very rare car, uh, a lot of interest in, in the 61 Dodge uh, Phoenix. With, with the fins. A Phoenix. That's right. I said uh, different, a wrong one. Dark Phoenix. Yep, yep. Dark Phoenix. In the Here. movie Cars, have you ever seen the movie Cars that Disney are put out? No. There's one of those in that movie. You're testing me now. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in the movie. Watch it. There's a Dodge Monaco, 78. This car is here because it is a, a, just a nice car. It, I gotta say that again, it's just a nice, nice car. Uh, you don't find too many. The interior is very special. 
Uh, it is a brome, uh, low mileage car. Uh, paint looks nice. It is nice. Look at take a look, look at the wheels. Uh, I mean, the very special wheel on this car. Yeah, you said that they're hard so. to find. Now I like the '70s stripe package it's got on. Sure. It. Yeah. It's like disco. We can do that with this one for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the the Plymouth uh, Sport Fury. Again, a kind of a rare car, and uh, the, the exterior's been refinished. The interior's been redone. Just get in, start it up, put some gas in it, and, and go down the homecoming parade. Triple red. Yeah. Oh, look at this, this one. I can tell you why this is a special car, or a rare car, however. This is a 67 Imperial a two door. Uh, it's special because of the exterior paint. You didn't see too many Imperials this color. Uh, if I've never seen another one. And then the interior is, is uh, complementing it with the white leather and, and accented with the uh, uh, black or gray, I guess it would be called. Of course, it's got the half uh, canopy roof as well. It's got a CV. It, I can't tell you if it works or not. But <laughs> I've owned that car twice. Cars, if, if you don't count me, it's a two owner car and really one owner because the car, I sold the car, I bought the car. Sold it and bought it back. That's the deal. It's that nice enough car. This car, take a look at the wheels again. Road wheels on it. Uh, this car was owned by a, a Chrysler factory exec in, individual. And he, uh, he knew how to take care of a car. He knew what the car was. It's a special car. It's got the special tag under the hood. And uh, St. Regis package, sunroof. You don't find too many sunroofs no. on these vehicles. No. And again, that's complemented with the rally wheels, as well as the leather, the tufted leather interior. Um, Is that about 25 feet long? 20 feet you, long? You, you'd look good on this. Of course, <laughs> what the heck, you'd look good on anything. But Thanks, Jim. <laughs> now, this is a, a very special car, and you were telling me about the motor on this one. Very rare car, 440 motor, and you just don't see many of these at, at anywhere at all with the 440. Don't see many in this body style, let alone with that motor in it. And again, I'll say it again, 440 motor. Uh, interior is beautiful in this car. Uh, really nice, and it's only got 30,000 miles on it. I had to look, sorry. <laughs> and a Polara. But, that's uh, what, Dodge I think Polaris, that's what makes it a lot. It's really odd. Look it up and see how many were built. Not many. And we're going to get a report on this one. So it's an opportunity to buy a, a, a very rare car at uh, with the right right motor under the hood yep now i've sold some vips but never this nice <laughs> this you know i i gotta say that you know if if there's a special car this would be one of them and i guess for a couple of reasons it is so clean yeah and it is a vip it's got air conditioning i mean just just look at the car and it'll tell you that it's everything that it should be it there really weren't is. very many made either. Pardon? There weren't very many VIPs made either. Is that no, correct? No, there weren't. They're pretty rare cars. There's a few of them out there these days, but again, not this nice. Right. It, I shouldn't say there's not one. They're this nice. I'll never say that about any car, but it is a nice one. You take a look and make up your mind, and you're going to agree. Another okay, Imperial. Okay, we're back to the Imperial business. Uh, again, another Imperial, the convertible. It would look good in any homecoming parade. The interior is awesome. This is a 67. Uh, again, nice clean car. I like the little wood trim here. Yeah. Boy, they thought of everything, didn't they, with Imperial? They sure did. And you know, that's one of the reasons that, uh, uh, maybe not that particular thing, but there's a lot of reasons that Imperial was ahead of Cadillac and Lincoln relative uh, to what they're offering in the showroom, but that also drove the price. True. And that's what the reason, you know, people were no different then than they are today. Price is important. Yep. Now, little, little Plymouth Scamp uh, slash Rampage. Uh, again, one of those vehicles I sold, uh, I sold a number of vehicles to the person that this car came from. Came out of an estate. Uh, the people were nice enough to call and see if I'd be interested. And yeah, like I said, this is a deal where maybe my heart took over and, 
and my head too as far as that goes I mean it's not, not going to make a lot of money out of it but it is worth good money um, paid good money for it and should bring good money because of its condition and rarity so. now Jim who who was your buyer when you sold scamps what kind of a person is it a, uh, a lady driver was it in town people who bought a scamp you could you could take a look today in fact they're looking at smaller pickups today uh -huh. on the marketplace I mean some of these ladies are not interested in getting jumping up into this big uh, full-size truck and some of them just need to go to the grocery store and then maybe haul something to the dump once in a while a lot of good reasons to own one of these it's a cute little pickup <laughs> Okay. And then we're back to the Imperial, and this this is this is a very nice, clean Chrysler Imperial LeBaron, and of course LeBaron takes it up a little bit, decor-wise. And you open the door, you take a look at this vehicle, you look up and down the side of it, and again, just one of those cars. What I can't say enough about it. The brown is really attractive with oh, this yeah, black and it's top. Deep metallic. I can say that about that uh, St. Regis package vehicle too. That was Sunfire, Sunfire Metallic was what they called that. Okay. This isn't Sunfire, but it's a high metallic content and it's it's pretty. They even have that wood grain going again. Okay. I just think that's really neat. And it's for sale. <laughs> I'll that? remember that. What is that, July 18th? Is that what it is? We got well, a Cordoba, yes. 79 Cordoba. Had a call on this car this morning. I was seriously interested, and I guess uh, hopefully we're going to be able to offer it on the on the auction. We'll be putting the uh, the list together here, a, a complete list together and a firm list together within a couple of hours, and uh, after that it'll be sold at the auction. So. Do you want to hear my Cordova story? You told me. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a lot of stories. <laughs> All right. Again, where do you see a 77 Chrysler Town & Country with road wheels? And I don't know, Jim, but I love this car. I mean, you, I, was, I was on the wayside the other day when Brother John, not the other day, a couple hours ago, when Brother John brought it out here. This is a sweet, sweet car. It just, they don't get any nicer. It's got the wing, wing windows and uh, it's power door locks. The family truckster. Yeah. From the Chris from the vacation movie. Sure. And uh, you got your wood grain, got your luggage rack. The only thing you don't have is Aunt Ethel on the top like in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a 55 Imperial four-door. Again, uh, nicely optioned vehicle. The interior's been done in this car. Again, a well-maintained car, good car in mechanical condition. Um, is this original exterior? Uh, the exterior is supposedly is original as far as I know it is, yes. Okay. And what do we have as our last car to talk about you today? Know, this, let's, wait a minute. Oh, okay. I, I'm in charge here. All right. I, yes, you are, Jim. <laughs> anyway, this is a 1955, as I mentioned, and it is an Imperial. And they called Imperials in 55 Imperials, never Chryslers. I'm going to make a note of that because I know I've done that wrong. 55, 56. That's, that's what they were. They were designated Imperials. And then 57, I think it was, they went back to Chrysler Imperials. Now, why did they do that? Well, I, I've been told of a couple of three different reasons why. Of course, that was all executives up in the, up in the tower. You know, they had good reasons marketing specialist, so to speak. Were they always right? I'll tell you, not in my <laughs> opinion. And, but I can tell you, I do have a lot of respect for a lot of the Chrysler execs. I mean, they, I was able to spend a lot of time with them uh, and when I was on National Dealer Council, and boy, there's a lot of people there, that, and ladies as well, that, uh, that had a lot to do with Chrysler success over the years. And of course, you know, there's been some issues too as well, some that, uh, we're, we're goofing up at the uh, Ivel Tower, but uh, anyway, been a good experience for, for me, it really has. I learned a lot and uh, appreciated the relationship that I had with those Chrysler employees and executives. But uh, here's a 68 Chrysler, yes, you're right. 68 Chrysler, this is a Newport.
I, uh, I sold this car. I bought it from a gentleman that just takes care of his cars. I mean, young guy, never drove it, just a really good... Anyway, I bought it from him. I sold it to a gentleman that was about 94 years old. And he flew, he was in Wisconsin, lived in Wisconsin, flew to uh, Florida every, for every winter. And he flew himself in his private plane at that kind of, at that age. So he did that back and forth. And anyway, I, I had sold him this car. And I think at 96, 97 years old, he passed. And I couldn't understand why I hadn't seen or heard from him. And I assume maybe something happened. So anyway, his caretaker called me, he says, Jim, he says, um, the gentleman that you sold this car to wanted to be sure that you had first chance to buy it back. Oh, that's cool. And I did. I mean, I had a really good relationship with him. Uh, he knew his cars, he had a lot of cars. I bought five cars from, from his estate, and this was one of them. And I knew the car from when I had it the first time. So. Now, I would say that Chrysler's doing pretty good on their new cars with the Hellcat and the Challenger and the Charger, and I think they're bringing back a lot of that muscle that my age wants again. Well, you, you mentioned Hellcat and Charger. Uh, we've taken a lot of pictures, but we don't have pictures of the Hellcat that's going to be offered at the auction. Yep. Uh, or the uh, uh, the Charger that's going to be offered. They're both new cars that'll be sold on an MSO. And by the way, uh, the the Dodge Daytona, uh, 89 Dodge Daytona, and the 87 Charger are both going to be sold on that MSO as well, just so everybody knows. And uh, I, I mean, I rode in a Challenger when they brought that back, and I was impressed. Well, uh, a lot of others were too. Yeah, and they, they fact, sold a uh, lot. you talk about the GM boys, they were looking, oh man, that was a Challenger, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think Chrysler's done a lot of things right. Yes, they sure have, and of course, we don't want to forget the Jeep lineup either, and we don't right. want to forget Guess Wine Motors, the place That's to buy That's right. One. Well, Jim, I really appreciate you talking about some of these cars here today, and folks, July 18th, Jim and I want to invite you up here to Millbank, South Dakota, and uh, get a piece of Jim's treasured collection, and these wonderful Imperials, and uh, the Superbirds, and Chrysler, Dodge, and a lot of other really cool cars. Catalog will be up soon. For more information, VanderbrinkAuctions.com. And of course, you could always ask Jim. You can give me a call as well, 605-949-2499. And I, so you can bid online yep. or in person. And as far as bidding online is concerned, there she is. She knows more than I. Okay. <laughs> but yes, we're going to be in South Dakota. And so uh, we'll have a live on-site auction down at the back lot of the dealership and it also will be online bidding and if you need to, phone bidding. So make sure to reach out to one of us and we'd be happy to help you. And we want to get these cars to good homes. Uh, I, that's exactly right. And I just want everybody to know that, that I would love to see you at the live auction. I really would. I mean, you'd be able to see these cars firsthand and I think maybe appreciate what I think that they are and I think you'd agree. I agree too, Jim. Thanks, okay. for, thanks for your time. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You Take care.